Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the Opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. Manet, part of what I find this so fascinating is not only the economic story of what's happening in America's workplaces and in labor unions and the labor movement, but also the political background for this story, because young people, college students have been historically a very strong Democratic Party constituency, as have union members. We have a president in office right now, Joe Biden, who says he is the strongest union president we've had in a long time. His wife is a member of one of the teachers unions. And yet there seems to be a divide here. And I wonder if this divide is growing and will become a problem for Democratic politicians, maybe including Joe Biden in the years to come. And another good example, if we want to jump off of the UAW, is the protests that happened on the college campus of Columbia University in New York. And some of the staff at Columbia, including the janitors, are represented by a union, the Transport Workers Union of America. The TWU has now threatened to sue Columbia for failing to protect those workers. There were a couple of janitors who were cleaning Hamilton Hall on April 30 when it was stormed by protesters. And it's another fascinating split screen of these Democratic constituencies. But if you read this letter from the union's head, John Samuelson, the Transport Worker Union International President, he is talking about these college kids are privileged. They verbally attacked this African-American TWU security officer who managed to get out. These custodians should just be able to go to work and do their jobs and support their families without having to put up with this smarmy, sanctimonious, elitist occupier in the words of this letter. And Manet, it does raise the prospect that politicians like Joe Biden might have to at some point make a choice. Are they going to stand with these union workers, these janitors, these auto workers, or are they going to stand with the protesters, the pro-Palestine, anti-Israel encampments? And we know that Joe Biden is also worried about that side of his flank as well. Well, this is an extremely old rift within the American left and your description of that conflict between the janitorial staff at Columbia and some of these students protesting reminded me of the stories you hear about 1968 and you have the hard hats and you have the cops who themselves would have been unionized, especially in Chicago where the convention was taking place. They would have been left-leaning Democratic Party members who were members of unions against a lot of these radical hippie protesters, essentially. And the National Democratic Party was making up its mind about which direction it was going to lean. And eventually you did see the triumph of the McGovern wing of the party and the more progressive, younger base being essentially promoted to the image of what the Democrats were going to be and the shedding of its traditional affinity with the sort of more blue collar part of its base, which a lot of entered the Republican Party after that point. And it seems like we're resuming that same exact clash. And there probably are certain Democrats in the country who would prefer and would think it'd be to their electoral advantage to signal that they were more on the side of the working and middle class folks who want to see law and order. But I think that they find it very hard to oppose the young left-wing protesters who they think have a lot of moral legitimacy. And so again and again, you see folks like Joe Biden, who himself describes himself as a blue-collar guy from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Nonetheless, he's surrounded by advisors who are coming out of these very progressive elite universities who very much are on the side of these left-wing protesters. And they tend to, at the end of the day, come out on that side of things when there's a clash. So I think it's a losing electoral strategy because that working class base is much bigger, frankly. There are more votes there in places like Michigan, Pennsylvania, that Joe Biden needs to compete. And a lot of people are probably watching some of these protests unfold on TV and thinking, is this really the way the Democratic Party is going and rethinking whether they want to support that? But I think that for 
incentives that uh, surround Joe Biden, he isn't able to actually push back against the left flank of his party. And they've been much more in the corner of the progressive protesters on these campuses. Alicia, what's your take on this? And am I making too much of this divide? Because the counter argument might be that if on Tuesday, President Biden stands with the pro-Palestine protesters and on Wednesday he stands with the unions, both of those are not going to get a better offer from the opposing candidate in this election, Donald Trump, who I think is probably against both the protesters and probably many of these union proposals and these strikes that we're seeing. And we'll give you the last word, Alicia. So I think, as Manet pointed out, there's a growing divide actually in the union movement, and that actually is increasingly between the service sectors and the hard hats, the construction buildings, labor unions. Though here, the UAW is itself split between you know, the auto workers and its increasing academic proletariat, which the academic workers could soon exceed the number of unionized auto workers. And so the SEIU, the Communication Workers of America, the Nurses Association, the Nurses Union have all been much more interested in progressive causes, and so have the public unions, or mainly the teachers' unions. Whereas on the other hand, the building trades unions, you know, they're more interested in jobs. And, and there's been this divide when you give the Keystone Pipeline and other projects where the service unions and the public sector unions or the teachers unions have opposed a lot of this and been promoted more ideological causes like climate change and such now the anti-Israel cause. And then you have the others who are more really interested in improving how to improve their working conditions as well as how to increase jobs. And I think Biden's kind of trying to straddle that divide within the labor movement. And I'm not sure he's doing it quite successfully because, again, even if he's got the support of some of these building trades unions uh, leadership, I think he's losing a lot of the support among its members because his positions are really antithetical to their own. And as a result, I think you look at some of the polls, he's losing support among unionized workers. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Manet. Thank you all for listening. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. If you like the show, please hit that subscribe button, and we'll be back next week with another edition of Potomac Watch. Mm-hmm.